simple, it's so silly, but man, it makes me happy. Hello, one and all, and welcome to back to more Let's Play Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. I am the next few trees in the last part. We defeated the Ghost Pirate Cortez, and then we also defeated Lord Crump, who was causing a bit of trouble at the same dang time. It was a bit of a, a two-for-one type situation with the bosses. We also checked in on Peach. She had to get naked again. It just kind of happens. We also saw Bowser. He might be dead now because he kind of exploded, but I don't know. He's been through worse, so we, we probably don't have anything to worry about there. And, uh, yeah, I dare say you just might be caught up. Also, we made friends with said ghost pirate so you know that's that's something it's just a big floating head zord on looking all right <laughs> just chilling out the harbor for the rest of all times i suppose he came back from that island alive made sure a blooming freak of nature but i'm a genetic freak and i'm not normal it's true i am you're a master you're a true tamer of the high seas you're more man than i am truer words have very seldomly ever been spoken yes hello all right, uh, what about you? What about you? What about you? If it weren't for you, those guys never would have returned. Thanks, pal. Tain't no thing. It's just kind of what Mario does. You know how it'd be. I better be careful when I go out to sea in the future. Little bro shouldn't have to worry about their older sibs. It's kind of crazy go nuts to, to really just to think that you want to go back out to sea after what happened. I don't know. Get shipwrecked and stranded once. I feel like that's more than enough for your lifetime, you know? My big brother came back safe and sound. It's all thanks to you. Thank you, Mario. I appreciate the thank. That's all I need in life. Well, oh, those guys all looked excited. They didn't get rich, but I still kind of envy them. It was one heck of a time. So there were ghosts? I don't care what kind of ship you got. I'd have been paralyzed. But hey, coming back on a better ship than you left on is quite the score. I don't know if you could really call it better than the ship that Flavio had. Um, it seems like a very apples and oranges type situation. That one was more decadent. This one's more cool. That one had warmer colors. This one's got cooler colors. You know, that sort of thing. It's it's all subjective is what it is. Anyway, anything new? That's your... Oh, nope, she's still talking about good old Loogie. Good old Loogie. All right. Can do, will do, can do, will do. All right, Luigi. I, uh, look, we, all, we, we both know how this is going to go, but I still do want to hear... Well, I got another piece of the marvelous compass at Jazafraz Town this time. Bro, I'm telling ya, I turned adventuring into an art form on that little quest. Woo! It was pretty dramatic, bro. Wanna hear what happened? It's a long story. And yeah, I know, you're just using this as an excuse to take a small nap after in between your adventures. You know what? Whatever. Like I said, I'm numb to it. I'm still gonna get the story out there anyway. Little does Luigi know that the somebody on the other dimensional plane that is gazing into these adventures through a screen, in fact, actually does very much care about his stories. I like to think he would, after being admittedly very freaked out by the fact that somebody, or lots of somebodies, are watching him at almost all times through an interdimensional window, he would then feel pretty flattered and unhappy about how many fans he had. Eh, well, like I said, it's a really long story, but here goes. As soon as we hit Jezefraz Town, we were overcome by the glitz and the glamour. You know all that styles. I, li I was literally in Glitzville. I'm surprised. I'm left to wonder if this place was really all that glitzy. It's a very lively town, bro. Tons of daisies live in there, and they're always smiling. Honestly, it's very off-putting. While looking for the piece of compass, I met the da hip daisy named Hazy. You should have met Daisy the Daisy, is what you should have done. Hazy was a producer, and he was looking for actors to go on stage with him. I told him we couldn't, since we were looking for the compass part, you, you know. But Hazy said we could win the compass part of the upcoming Drama Slam! He said the so-called Drama Lava plaque might, in fact, be one of the parts. Well, we just had to give it a try, so we rehearsed with the cast and hit the stage. Our musical was called The Mystery of the Fiery Hat of Social Awareness. Wow, that sounds intensely pretentious. The script was great, but I got really hosed, bro. My role, my part, was grass. I played grass by the side of the road. Grass, bro! Grass! I just sprawled out on the ground and had to be silent. Everyone but me had lines. I don't care if I was wearing green. Who cast someone based on that? It was awful. In the end, our musical was the talk of the town, and we won the drama slam. It was the pride of the peaches, you see. 
I got the compass part I was after, but even that didn't make me very happy. The huge after party just made me feel worse, so I snuck out the back door. But wow! Outside there were tons of fans! My fans! Fans of grass! They swarmed me! I'm not entirely sure if this part of the story is legitimately true. Like, I think Luigi thinks that's what happens, but is that really what all those people were there for? I wonder. I just couldn't believe it! Imagine cheering for grass! I was ecstatic, bro! After that, I added the beast of the marvelous compass, which pointed north. It pointed to the rapturous ruins in Grimble Forest. Then, the voice again. Oh, my cherished pr Princess Eclair, how you soothe me. I would be glass for you. I'm not entirely sure what that means, and I'm going to be honest with you, Luigi. None of my business, you do you. I will find you. I will eat you. I will stand by your side and be your Luigi. Or whatever the flying hell you want me to be. I'm not picky. I'm... I'm I'm so lonely, Mario. Well, uh, sorry about that, bro. Uh, so, yeah, anyway, uh, then I got back on my boat. I came back to Rogueport, and here I am. Another leg of my adventure completed. It was a swell story, Luigi, even if I wasn't paying any attention. Also, tragically, this proves a long-standing uh, rumor or thought process, or theory or whatever. You see, in the GameCube version of this game, Admiral Bobberby would literally... Bobberby? Bobberby! No, that's... Admiral Bobbery would literally never fall asleep while Luigi was talking. But he very much did fall asleep here, which means that that was, in fact, never actually intended. And that is honestly kind of a bummer. I was hoping that that was, in fact, deliberate. It's an old man appreciating a story. But no, it was merely an oversight. Ooh. That's Luigi's daisy friend, Hazy. Apparently, Hazy's an actor-director, so you know he's full of himself! You know Luigi's acting debut, right? The grass thing? I could never play grass. Heck nah, you a star! I'd want to play a princess! And a prince would wake me up with a kiss. So romantic! Just letting your, <laughs> letting your thoughts fly free, ain't you there, Goombella? You know what? That's okay. I respect it. I'm Hazy, and I must say, Luigi is a great actor. One of the finest I've seen. After this adventure, we're going on tour to appear on stages everywhere. I'm going to be known as the Red Miracle, and of course, Luigi will be grass. No part of your existence is red. Why would you be called that? Huh. Alright, well, the good news is that the director doesn't seem to contradict anything that Luigi said. The water smells pretty rank, but that's like the magic of a port town, you know. <laughs> Ugh, that's unfortunate. Dang it, I keep hitting the wrong button! What am I? How can one man be so incompetent? Okay, well, at least I didn't... At least I didn't hit Goombella with a hammer. Ugh. Because that's the low bar that we're working with right now for myself. Sheesh. Alright, alright, alright. We got a lot of people to run around and talk to is what we've got. Now, let's see. Interesting. That's peculiar. Huh. There's supposed to be, uh... Oh, well, okay, well, there is something over here. The HP drain! Drop Mario's attack by one, but regain one HP when attacking. Yeah, um... I'm not entirely sure that... You come to this bucket often, Goombella? <laughs> ah, ah, okay. So, uh, anyway, it's weird. I feel like I remember that badge being different. Damn! Television! Dang it! Dang it! Let it! Alright. I, like, I think it was, it, it's, it's whole shtick, it's gimmick was that, uh, drop your uh, attack power by one, and you, like, gain one HP per turn, which is every bit as useless as that sounds. I'm not sure if that's, that is the same badge, or if they changed it at all, or if that was in a different game, I don't know. We've already long since, long since shown that a lot of wires get crossed in my brain when it comes to, uh, this in the first game. Uh, it's been far too long since I've played this. My goodness. Ah, my pants! Hey, that's your ring, Mario. Must be an email from Princess Peach. Check it! Alright, fine. I will, in fact, check it. Dearest Mario, I have good news. I don't know where I'm being held, but there's an odd computer called Tech here. By cooperating with this tech, I've managed to obtain some of these fiends' data. Tech is currently analyzing it, and as strange as it may sound, I trust him. I mean, sure, yes, he does ask me to get naked. A lot. Frequently. 
I mean, more than I feel like should be justifiable in any healthy relationship. But, you know, I mean, you do what you gotta do. Once this analysis is done, I should be able to provide you with details of their plans. I'll email you again once I learn more. Be good, okay? Princess Peach. Why you gotta add that to the end of the thing? You trying to th you saying that Mario would get up to no good if he wasn't told? Come on now. I mean, sure, we've learned that he's a twisted little guy, apparently, by his own admission, but he's a good guy. Come on. Wow, that Princess Peach is so totally awesome. Go girl, we better get to work too. And playing as if we've been slack a lacking this whole time? Perish the foot. I feel like we've been kicking all manner of butt this whole dang time. Also, mail! Man, we've got so much mail. So many things to read. Late in the afternoon today, Gomez, known for napping in the flowers in the West Side Park, was found eating flowers and given a stern warning by authorities. As for comment, Gomez started, Oh, I just really love flowers and I was hanging out and before I knew it, they were in my mouth. I'm so ashamed. I'll go eat some flowers. <gasps> my secret shame. Citizens of Rogueport respond with disbelief and grudging support for the strengthening of flower conservation efforts. Oh my goodness. Ooh, the Twilight Shop. Watching the husband and wife proprietors of this shop at work is a heartwarming sight. But don't get on the hubby's bad side. Don't you go smiling at my wife, says the jovial, jealous shopkeeper. I'm hers for life, and your fancy big city teeth aren't going to change that. Man is uh, self-conscious about his teeth. Well, who could out their eternal love? Surely not this reporter. Knowing what we know of that, mm, mm, I certainly hope that's the case. Uh, anyway, for, uh, we press the shopkeeper for further comments, but regret that his words are unprintable here. Damn. Man went full Qbert. We did learn from his highly chatty spouse that there will be a double point sale for all our DM readers. Just show her this screen in the next 15 minutes to double your points on any purchase. Fascinating. Also, let's see. Combine a turtle leaf and a horse tail? Fascinating. Perfect for your next gathering of herbivores. You know, I'm sh Wait, mush. Uh, I I'm sure some of my party members are herbivores. Also, what? Hello, Mario. This is Mush, Jolene's younger brother and first champion of the Glitz Pit. Remember me? Yes, this is new. Thanks for helping me out recently. Still not sure what happened, but I do know that if you and my big sis hadn't saved me, well, I get chills just thinking about it. Anyway, I was wondering if you heard about my big comeback? I've been pushing all of my limits with the most punishing training regime uh, re of my entire career. I'm finally feeling and seeing the results, so it's time for Prince Mush to make a grand return to the ring. I want you to witness the fruits of my labor, Mario. I asked my sister for help, and she's arranging a special exhibition match for the two of us? Like, for realsies? Like, for actually really, really reals? New champ versus old champ. If you accept my challenge, I'll be waiting for you in the Glitz Pit. Prepare for a Prince Mush performance like you've never seen before. I'm actually not sure that you've seen me battle before, so uh, just believe me when I say I was good. <laughs> I, I suppose I have to. Don't leave me waiting, Great Gonzalez from Prince Mush. Um, well, if that's if that's true, that's a that's a that's a, that's a big deal, actually. That's new content. I am very very interested. Let's see, let's see. The Mega Rush Band, Jumpman Badge. These are pretty good badges. These are pretty good badges, but no, no, no. Not right now. I just don't have the money to be tossing around. What I do have the money, oh, oh, that is so much money for that book. For Luigi, who I can only assume is getting a cut of the residuals up on this one. Or at the very bare minimum, I hope to God he is. All right. Here we go. Super Luigi 2. <coughs> Allies, an adventure. It's a little warm, Luigi muttered, the sweat dripping from his brow as he followed the compass up Rumble Bump Volcano's side. Must find the secret grotto. While Luigi had guts, guts and might to spare, he did need a guide, and he found one in Bluey, a Bluey he met in town. Brave Bluey joined Luigi and instantly proved to be invaluable. With his aid, Luigi bested a savage statue that protected the treasure. That treasure was none other than a piece of the marvelous compass, a piece that pointed west to Plump Belly Village. The second Luigi saw Plump Belly Village, he knew something was amiss. All was woe, and Luigi soon learned that the reason, or he learned the reason why from the mayor. Oy vey. The town was at the mercy of a sinister serpent who demanded sacrificial, sacrificial la- Why am I- it, mm, It's getting hard to tell what I'm saying incorrectly on purpose and what is just a legitimate screw-up. Regardless, sacrificial lasses burning with indignation. 
righteous indignation, Luigi formed a team of liberators. A fierce mob warrior named Jerry joined his crew and chose, not surprisingly, to stick with Luigi for the duration of his quest for Eclair. Fortified by his allies, Luigi strode on into the lair of the beast, a foul two-headed snake. No time to think, Luigi sprang forth. Twin heads snapped at his heels, fangs dripping venom. Then, as one mouth gaped wide to swallow Luigi, the other crept behind. Our heroes sensed the treachery and fainted before leaping. The heads collided, and the beast ate itself, like the freaky Ouroboros thing. The prize? A compass piece! The villagers begged their savior to stay with them, but a grim-faced Luigi pressed bravely onward. To be continued. I mean, that's significantly less embellished than last time. You know, that that's still more or less all transpired. They just kind of, you know, omitted some of the finer details. <laughs> is all, is all. Anyway, how you doing, Flavio? <laughs> Hello there, you Mario. You are doing well, I must assume, yes? <laughs> Who, me? Oh, you are asking? Well, I am now the second richest man in Rogueport. <laughs> yes, having my beautiful SS Flavion smashed to bits was not a financial boon. Hmm. <laughs> and I, uh, I regret to say I, uh, I didn't take out the insurance policy. Uh, family always told me that, ga that, you know, insurance was basically legalized gambling. I'm, I'm really kind of kicking myself for that one. Oh, boy. Anyway. Man, man, man. There's got to be better bitches. I need better be hmm? Interesting to have more than one of those. Fascinating. Let's see here. I, I got to buy something. I got to buy something. I already got that. So buy something. Uh, fine. Soft stomp. I'm gonna have to find a way to, you know, make tons and tons of money. My goodness. All right. All right. All right. So, there's that and that and that. Now, let's see. What else is there to do, to do, to do, 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 do? We've got the trouble board. We also need to actually turn in the stuff. Also, we've got to upgrade a couple of our pals is what we got to do. All right. That's easy peasy. -um. Let's see here. Yep. Bobbery! It's time to learn hold fast to damage direct attackers. Man straight up has a cross counter ability, of all things. Which, I mean, it can come in handy, but it, it, it kind of depends, like, entirely on the enemies that you're facing, you know? If you know for a fact that the enemy is going to crash headfirst into Bobbery, then, you know, then you could do something with that. Oh, look at that! There's a foot up there. There you go! What a dignified lad! Care to power up more? As a matter of fact, yes. She'll be able to use T's to make all the enemies disease. Duh. I guess is ultimately what I just said and implied. I'm sorry, Miss Mouse. That's not where I was going with that. But, um, yeah, I, uh, I guess that's on the record now. I, I apologize. And yes, yes, yes. Don't worry. Once again, I said I have a plan for Miss Mouse. She will get her spotlight. It's Bobbery's time, gosh dang, gun, don, gun, dun, darned it. Boy, anyway, I'd love to power up more, but it's not an option. Now give me that bum boy again. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. Let's see here, let's see here. What would be the right, 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 right call? I believe the troubles can be done right here, right now, no problem. Alright, we've only got the two. I want you to meet and speak to someone for me. I'll tell you all about it at my house in Twilight Town. Oh, that's extraordinarily descriptive, thanks. All right, do it, do it right. All right, all right, all right, if that's what we've got to do. We're just going to have to, I guess, go into literally every single house in Twilight Town and, and see what's what. Almost murdered that bug for literally no reason. I got to at least get the financial gains. I got to at least get my residuals. All right, out of the way, you guy. Ugh. And down we go. I am, in fact, looking forward to updating the uh, the big tube lands once more. Yeah, gotta get the map updated first, but still, still, if man, it's not. I don't, look, I don't got anything against Cortez and his boats. You can use it. He'll get you there. But you know, it's just something so neat and I don't know, just. There's something about just unlocking a shortcut that's just really freaking cool. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. All right, so we've got nothing going on in there. 
Okay. Uh, what about you, mother of three? Are you the one? Yes, you are. Well, Mario, you've accepted my trouble request. I sure did. Well, it's hard to talk about it in front of the children. Can we step outside? Is this about the fact that one of your kids tried to eat you when you were a pig? And might still be trying as we speak? I need you to help me to meet someone. His name is Podly, my former love? <laughs> Wow, what a fancy and dapper tune. Sorry, I was, I was just caught off guard by it. We had the same dream, to be stars of the musical stage. We shared our dreams, and we shared a wonderful love for a time. In that cramped little apartment, we huddled together, poor but happy. But when I finally got a part in Broadshroom, play as the bleeding lady, Podley left me. Wow, why would he do that? He left a quickly scrawled note that said only this. My dear, I would only dim your bright future. Farewell. Oh, Podley, why? Also, apparently, clearly, that is not what ended up happening, my guy. Um, I don't know. I, this lady might be happy in her current state of, you know, situation, but she ain't no actress. My dream was always to be with you, not to be a star that shines alone. I wanted only to shine with him. Success was nothing without him. I left the production while it was in rehearsal. Oh. I forgot about Podley and my dreams. I got married and lived the life of a housewife, happy in its quiet comforts. I do appreciate that I'm getting all the details. I, my, I am mildly sorry that I was so accusatory and, uh, <laughs> and making things up as I went. And now, I'm surrounded by beautiful children. One of them keeps chewing on my arm, admittedly, and I, uh, you know, he, we're, 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 he's going into counseling next week. But aside from that... My happiness is so complete now, I had forgotten about those days. But then I heard a rumor that Podley was running a Chocola shop in Rogueport. He's literally just two warp pipes away. You can go see him. Could you please tell him that I would like to see him again? Tell him that pure-hearted Eve has not forgotten her first love. <laughs> yes, pure-hearted Eve was my stage name. Wow, okay. Kind of rude that you needed clarification on that. Please meet with Podley and ask how he feels about me. Please, Mario. What an odd situation indeed. Oh, all right. I mean, as I said, like, lady, the pipe to get to him is right in front of your house. I cannot stress to you just how easy of a trip this would be. I guess it's possible she just can't make that face-to-face -face connection, eh? But still, color me, I don't know, confused. I guess, I guess it would be awkward. I don't know. But if she really wanted to see him that badly... I feel like you'd, you know, brave the awkwardness of the situation. Tis merely my thoughts on the subject, at least. Anyway, yo, Podly, uh, you leave a girl high and dry? What the frig, bro? This is the second situation with a lady type involved that involves a lot of heartbreak. Welcome to Podly's place, an intersection of human lives and drama, if you will. Mario's the only human here. What are you talking about? What's that you say? What is it, Mario? Tell me. You look so serious. Uh -huh. What? E Eve? You, uh... You doing a, a hard reboot there, buddy? I know no such person. What? Lies! P perhaps you could tell this Eve person? Uh, something? Tell her... Live in the moment. And is that all you need? Because I'm a little busy. All right. Aha! This man do be... What? Mm, I don't know. You know, when when he kind of didn't deliver the letter to Bobbery and whatnot, uh, you know, that's one thing. With emotions running high and everything, uh, it wasn't very... It wasn't a good thing that he never gave the letter, because clearly that letter is what it would take to snap the lad out of his funk and let him live his life again. And now this? I think Podley just has, like a cripplingly serious issue with any kind of drama or confrontation. Like, the dude can just not handle it. He folds like an origami crane. My goodness. All right, so, uh, have you met with Podley? Really, what did he say? Uh, tell her the truth, or... I mean, you know what? 
this isn't really making something up, you know? This is me. What for, we know Podly is lying, and he muttered under his breath that he still missed her, so I'm going to go ahead and say this. Oh, Podly, I knew our love could never die. It's not a lie! He clearly still holds feelings for her. Thank you, but no more. I'm a different person now. Yes, a devoted mother. And mothers don't deserve to be loved? The hell kind of logic is that? Just knowing he feels the same is enough for me to know joy for all of my days. Mom, I'm so hungry! Food, food! Oh, we're having a feast tonight, kids. I have special dinners from Zesty's shop. She doesn't have a shop. It's more of an open cafeteria. Mario, you have one, too. Oh, well, thank you. Food that refills 7 HP and gradually recovers even more. It's like a slow shroom, but better. That's pretty baller. Thank you so much, Mario. You've breathed new life into this old girl's heart. Well, I mean, as long as you're happy about it, I guess. Why are you crying, Mom? Can I chew upon your ankles? <sighs> Damn it, Tim. <laughs> all right. Well, I suppose all's wells that ends wells. I, I guess. <laughs> Not really sure how else to really look at it in the long term. Eh? <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So, we've got you just one more trouble to get ourselves involved with. And then everything will be all hunkadorium. And this one is a wee bit silly. Although, hmm, you know what? We could, we could in fact do this. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Now, eh, I got, oh, come on! Freaking nibbles always messing with my biz. All right, come on, there we are. So I got word on this and I don't remember there being anybody up here, but I've been assured that there is, so... Tup, 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 tup. Hmm. You know, you seem vaguely familiar, but I'm not sure. Huh. Uh, no, yeah, hello, Flurry. Uh, no, I, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was asking the Goombella. That guy's name is Grifty. He's a laid-back, rooftop, minstrel-type guy. You don't say. He tends to know all the stories that get passed around Rogueport streets. For a couple coins, I'll tell you one. And you never know, it might help on our travels. Really? Oh, all right. <laughs> Good afternoon to you, sir. I am called Grifty, the traveling minstrel. I spend days here in leisure, spinning tales that spin the senses. I know but a few of the stories that's around the town of Rogueport. If you like, I can share them with you, but it will require just a few coins. Is there a tale you want to hear? These are the tales I can tell you now. Damn, that's a, that's a fair few stories that you can tell. Interesting. I want to say this guy was here before. Uh, you know what? Okay. I don't know if I can roll with every single story. I don't want to fill up the entire video with just these, but uh, we can at least check out maybe one or two. Ages ago, a city flourished here in peace and splendor, but it was destroyed in a single day by a demon from the dark beyond. Historians claim a great calamity befell the city, but nay, it was a demon! The city sank below ground, and one quarter of the old city became the demon's den. This demon put fear into the hearts of all men. The women and children were surprisingly chill with it, I guess, and sent out minions to take the land. And its den, its palace, grew rich with the treasures stolen from all over the world. If there is another tale you wish to hear, just ask. Well, they're not terribly long now, are they? All right, yeah, we can probably get through a few of these. Tell me more. In order to increase its already formidable power, the demon created crystal stars to hold the essence of the heavens. These stars were scattered across the land, the better to exert the demon's influence. One of the castles built to contain these stars will stands near, still stands near Petal Meadows. So that's where it came from, and what its purpose was before Hooktail got in there. If that's actually really cool. I, I appreciate knowing that. That's something I, I legitimately wanted to know. One day, there came a hero who could vanquish the fell demon. The young toad from Petal Meadows was strong of arm, but shy of voice. And also weak of... 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 bladder. <laughs> All those around the boy teased him endlessly about the way he spoke. But when the demon cast its fearful gaze across the lands and reached out, the young toad used his strength and honor to defend his people. And boy howdy, let me tell you, they all felt right... right they all felt like right proper assholes after the way they treated him. And he became a hero to all, despite his odd voice. 
Seriously, the, the dude talked like Bobcat Goldwith. It was weird. If there's another tale you wish to hear, just ask. And for those who don't know what Bobcat Goldwith sounds like, he kind of spoke like this. It was, it was a strange man. Is he still alive? I should Google it. Regardless, tell me of this wise Goomba, why won't you? I'll continue to toss some shiny coins your way. There was a wise Goomba from Boggly Woods gifted a knowledge of the world. Really? Boggly Woods? When beasts rose to take the woods, this knowledge helped the people fight them. And this Goomba who knew the way that every monster would attack. She began to think of a way to banish all monsters from the land. <gasps> Kinda reminds me of you, Goomba. It was a smarty pants Goomba gal. That's delightful. If there's another tale you wish to hear. Yeah, tell me about this stalwart Koopa, why don't you? I've got, I've got the money for it. A Koopa who traveled the world alone learned of the darkness covering the land. He went alone wherever evil dwelt and banished it with shell and sheer bravado. The monsters grew to fear this scar-riddled Koopa who thwarted them at every turn. But the brave Koopa was finally taken in a trap set for him by the monsters. But then a boo who fought with the monsters came and used her magic to free him. The brave Koopa's spirit had melted the heart of the cold boo lass. Oh dang, interspecies relationships. How progressive. There's another- I wonder if they were scorned for this. How far into the past was this? I've got so much- For every answer I'm given, new questions arise! The Boo used her powerful magic to learn more about the evil they faced. Cannot destroy the darkness alone, she decided. Her grip face a grim mask. But then again, you know, I guess she was also a Boo, and I guess that's kind of the default, supposedly. We need the Toad Hero of Petal Meadows and the Wise Goomba of Boggly Woods. The Boo's magic drew the four heroes together to send the demon from the world. And so the four heroes finally set out for the Palace of Shadow. This is all very legitimately interesting and awesome. Please, continue. Yeah, no. It's become all too clear to me that these are the fellows that what once did battle with the demon and sealed it in that there box. You know, you really should go downstairs and talk to Professor Frankly. You're, you're, you're giving us a lot of good stuff here. The power of the world devouring demon was greater than any could imagine. But the wise Goomba soon realized that this was the power of the crystal stars. She thought of a way to take the stars and use them against the demon. She told the other heroes her plan and set it in motion, banishing their fears. The pool's magic and the toad's strength created a gap in the demon's defenses. At that moment, the brave Koopa seized the stars and succeeded in badly damaging the demon. This is all very dope. Continue, continue, continue. I just might have more than enough money to be able to see this whole thing through. But even the brave Koopa's stroke was not enough to end the demon's reign. The wise Goomba thought of another use for the crystal stars in that dire hour. See, she suggested sealing the demon forever with the crystal stars. All agreed. The heroes matched their strengths with the power of the crystal stars. And they successfully sealed the demon's soul within the deepest part of the palace. These four sound awesome. Together they made it so that only all seven stars could break the steel. Or seal, I meant rather. Oopsie. If there is another- Yeah, come on, come on, come on. Man, you can You know, if, can I just give you like 20 coins and you can just tell me all the stuff? The four heroes thought they had sealed away the demon with all of its powers. But the demon used a tiny opening before the seal was complete to curse them all. While holding the crystal stars, they'd feel nothing. But when they let them go, a black chest would appear to seal their souls within. The four heroes traveled the world, scattering the stars so the seal would remain. But the last four stars each carried the curse which claimed each hero. They're the people in the black chests that have been cursing me this whole time? Is that also why they've actually been ultimately helpful? Holy crap, that's a serious drama bomb right there. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Legit. Holy crap. That's fantastic information. I just kind of assumed it was one of those things you just kind of had to, you know, nod your head to. Oh, this must have been in the original, and I... Did I just... Did I somehow miss that all this time? Dang. You know, look, as admittedly silly as it is that I missed it, I gotta say, I think a game that you can learn something new while playing each and every single time you play it, no matter how often, is a pretty good game. I don't know. I choose to look at that in a, in a good light. Anyway, this dude's looking for a gal. 
pretty happy living out here on Key Hall Key, but there's one thing I miss. Girls! Please come listen to my request. I'm deep in the grotto on Key Hall Key. Want to take a, the deep in the grotto? Like the, the pirate's grotto? All they, all the stinking way in the, the, the pirate's grotto? Hmm. Well, no matter how you look at it, we're gonna, well, I guess I don't need the shortcut, but you know what? I want the shortcut. The shortcut is what I desire, and it's what I'm gonna be going with. It's, it's what we're gonna use. Also, actually, hold up. Hold up! We've got a lot of things to blow up. All right, so we've got that now. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy! There's so much to do, so much to see. So what's wrong with taking the underground sewer complex? Mm, that's not quite as catchy, I feel. Anyway, hey! Uh, I should trade for badges, shouldn't I? You know what? I want the attack FX badge, please. Yes. I will gladly take that. I'll also take the chill out. Sure, why not? Now, that prevents me from ever experiencing uh, first strikes ever again. I could get one of these, but mm, no. No, let's not. Item hog sounds pretty good. No, I, I want pretty lucky. I want pretty lucky. Just Sometimes enemies are just going to randomly miss, and that's pretty great. Peekaboo is a good badge, but I, I want to keep on tattling, and the easiest way to know whether or not I've tattled something is if their HP is there or not, so it's it's nothing but a hindrance to me. I guess I'll get this Flower Saber badge, too. Why not? There we are, there we are, there we are, and uh, that's all we can afford for now. Not bad, not bad, not bad. All right, let me just quickly head into my badges, and I will equip all of these sound effects, because why not? Why not, I dare say. Also, uh, let's see, uh, my equipped badges, please. I would like to remove Power Plus. There we are. And I will replace it with... Hmm. <laughs> I can get Shell out a little later. Yeah, sure. Flower Saver and Pretty Lucky. Let's go with it. Let's just keep going with that boring but practical style that I've just kind of really made my own at this point. Make everything cost a little bit less, why don't we? Anyway, uh, knock knock, AOAO, what's going on in here? You mind giving me the hoe down? Oh, right! You're that guy! You're that guy! I'll never make use of your services, but yeah. That's Chet Rippo, the adjuster. He can adjust your stats or your partner's ranks. Me? I wouldn't trust this guy with anything more complex than plucking back hair. I know I always say you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, but bro, this guy's got a wash basin on his head. It's, it's weird. <laughs> Welcome to Chet Rippo's adjustment house. This is where you come to adjust your stats or your partner's ranks. If you want some adjustments done, talk to me on the other side of the table. Basically, you can trade one of your level up stats for something else. Like, uh, I could trade three of my BP for an upgrade to HP or something. I don't have any interest in doing so, but, you know, there it is. That's there waiting for you, if and you feel so inclined. Or maybe you just, like, horribly regret a particular level-up choice you made. You know, it's possible. And you know what? I'm gonna just tell you, I would most definitely not be a judging you. Anywho. Oh, man, are you guys ready? We're gonna have literally our entire group together when we put this next star into the pedestal thingy. That's so awesome! Oh, I'm looking forward to... What on earth? What in the hickin' hookin' hickin' heckin' heck? All right, bring it on, jerk! Eh, there we are. Now, I fought in a dark coup patrol, but have I fought a normal one? Let's find out together. The answer is... No! God damn, that took a while! Okay, now to knock them on their asses. Let's go! Oh my goodness. All right, well, uh, first things first, let's just get rid of this stinky nerd, why don't we? There we go. Lots of starter points for me. You'll see no complaints here. All right, Goombala, Goombala, Goombala. Now, do yourself a bit of a tattle at, if you will, if you please. Thank you very much. Go for it. This is a Koopa Troll, a Koopa Troopa who protects himself with spiked armor, which, I mean, kudos. That's a 
Brilliant idea. Armor is always a smart idea. Max HP 6, attack 4, defense 2. If it attacks with its shell and with its head, then sometimes charges up for a fierce move. Plus, if you take too long to win, it'll call reinforcements. Eh, yeah, sort of gnarly, huh? It's one of the worst of Bowser's guys. Koopa Troopas dream of being Koopa Trolls. Hey, and uh, by the way, what do you think Bowser's doing now anyway? Eating? <laughs> I, I don't even know what to say to that. <laughs> that I don't know. There's... I just really uh, enjoyed that for some reason. The mundanity. The mundanity of what she just says. Like, so what do you think Bowser does with his off time? You like, you think, you know, you think he's watching Antiques Roadshow? You think that's a thing he'd do? I don't know. I'm just spitballing here. Like, I don't know. There's, there's something really charming about that. Goombella, you're charming as all heck and I appreciate you. Anyway, I'm going to beat this wizard to death with a hammer. As is the tradition of my peoples. Then get the stars, then we get a lucky, and there we go. All my badges do... I don't have a normal Magic Koopa? Oh, wow. I guess I... Yeah, I guess all of the Magic Koopas that I have tattled... Yeah, I guess those were all differently colored. Wow. How interesting to run across all of these things in the sewers. That's a Magic Koopa. You know, a, a Koopa wizard. Tellingly, it's it's not Kamek. The... It's, that's just such a mess. Max HP 7, attack 4, defense nothing. It'll throw a load of pain our way while using magic to help its buddies. What a creep. And when there's only one of them, it splits up into multiple copies to mess with us. Stop this thing fast or we'll be in a world of hurt. All right, you got it. Attacking us with the power of PlayStation symbols. Shabo! Oh, or I guess using your magic to heal. How extraordinarily annoying and stupid of you. I'm a cave your skull in. Wobblam! And, oh man. I, I mean, we did knock over some of the things in the background. Oh, in retrospect, I probably shouldn't have done that. It's just going to use its magic. Curse you and your tricky ways, wizard! Oh, well. I mean, I've got ways just as tricky-sicky as you do, so... There we go. I ain't going to deal with your weird find the, the, the coin under the cup game, except with your nerdy face. Also, yes, it does bother me immensely. I'm two star points away from leveling up. Oh, it bothers me a lot. Uh, all right. Well, okay. All right. Mm. Not a fan. Not a fan. What I am a fan of, though, is this. Look at all the friendship. Man, if you didn't have Miss, <laughs> if you don't get Miss Mouse, this gonna looks very lopsided, don't it? Oh, I'm so happy. All righty dighty dighty Oh, mystical, magical, wonderful map of the ancients. Uh, do be doing me a bit of a favor and tell me where the heck and heck am I supposed to be headed next? I require information from your big rainbow laser. Rainbow laser! It's good times. It's good times. Some sort of fancy museumium or some such thing. That's pretty neat. What do you think, Bobbery? You don't get to talk too much. Right, let's pop in on that professor fellow. Oh yeah. Man, a few words. I dig it. Let's see. What do you gotta say about all the things that what have proceeded, Mister Frankly? Great news, my friends! Now we know the next crystal star is in Poshley Heights! Sounds fancy and or pantsy. Price your point! Wait a tick! I've heard tell that only the rich and famous call that place home. Yes, yes, and I believe Poshley Heights is also home to a shrine to the stars called Poshley Sanctum. The next crystal star must be hiding inside that shrine. I'm certain of it! Fairly certain! Mostly certain! Somewhat certain! Not very certain. But hey, no fears of monsters or dangerous dungeons this time. Thanks for cursing us on that one. Just a simple tourist attraction. <laughs> Sounds positively scintillating, dear boy. Point us there. Well, that's the best part. You ride the most famous train of all, the XS Express. Yes, after a luxurious steam engine excursion, the next crystal star will be yours. Getting those crystal stars has been back-breaking work, but this time will be a cinch. 
Uh, bold proclamation there, Professor. Pardon me for saying so, but mustn't you have a treasury full of riches to ride that train? Mm, well, that may be true. Perhaps you should go ask the mob for help with this, too. I mean, why not ask the mob for a second favor? Oh, no. Terribly sorry. Mm -mm, impossible. Can't do it. The man's reprehensible. Trance, I suppose there's nothing for it, eh, old boy? Well, bend my arm, why don't you? All right, let's go talk to the mob. Silly Bobbery, you ain't got no arms. All right, then twist me key. Damn, whatever, man. You don't have to get all nitpicky on me. Excellent, then we're set. We may not have much time until the demon resurrects. You must hurry. I'll gather all the information I can. You guys just handle your end of things, which is like 98.7% of all the things. Also, boo mail? Hello, are you Mario? Did this email, did you get this email? Look, technology freaks me out, so if you're not Mario, please destroy this email, okay? But if you are, uh, thanks for saving my captured friends. I figured I'd share a hot tip with you as thanks, so here it is. There's still a lot of treasures and creepy steeple. Of course, knowing you, you've probably already found it all. I'm so useless. Well, enjoy your not-so-useless adventure, the creepy steeple boo. Freaked out by technology, but still managed to take a selfie. Fascinating, that. Anyway, what's your story? What you doing outside your house, you weird mustachioed man? Huh. Oh, timing. Yes, this was destined. When I consulted my star charts, I saw a portentous sign for you, Mario. Oh boy, didn't say that right. It went thusly. In the house of the dragon that flew through the air, beyond the reversible stair, near the empty black chest that cursed you, lies a clue to help your allies learn. I have no idea what it means, unfortunately. But I have no doubt of its importance as a sign for you and your friends. If you figure out this mystery, come and tell me immediately. I mean, it's pretty telltale obvious to me, my guy, but... Alright, sure. Alright, so... Ah, alright. So, first things first, we gotta finish up the trouble. Which means we gotta go find that Goomba chilling out in the grotto. Alright, alright, that could end up taking a little bit. But I can most assuredly show you guys the uh, the big warp pipe room getting itself all properly updated and whatnot. That sounds like a pretty swell time. I'm game for that mess. Give me more stuff! I could skip it, but I don't know. It makes me feel so good. It's just like, oh, look at all the progress we're making. Look at all the shiny shinies. Oh, I love me a good shiny shiny. Most choice. Baller, one might even say. Alrighty. Well, uh, I guess I'll go and find that there Goomba. Mm, back in a momentum. Okay, so admittedly, I tried to not get into confrontation, but I did, and now I'm leveling up, so... And naturally, I, I, I kind of need to show that to you guys. <laughs> uh, can't say I did that off screen. No siree, no sirrah. Bada bing, bada boom, you already know what I'm doing. Technically, this is a challenge run. Technically. So dang, Bomber, he's got a lot of HP. So cool, so cool. This should be the place, and it is. Huzzah. All right, so this guy wants to meet a girl. Now, that is pretty easy to facilitate. I feel like we all pretty obviously know the obvious solution to this particular riddle. However, boy howdy would I be remiss to not show him every single one of our partners before I show him Goombella. So, let's give it a go. Hey, thanks for taking on my trouble all the way out here too. I know it's far. It really is highly impractical. Not a fan of the fact that I had to do this. I came out here to enjoy island life, but now that I'm here, I just feel lonely. Mr. Lonely. There's no one to date. I mean, no one. I'm chatting up sea turtles here. Like sea koopas? Anyway. So all I need you to do is introduce me to a gal who's nice and chatty. That's it. A nice chatty gal. Okay? I do know a nice, pretty, chatty gal. I mean, she's out of your league, but, you know, I do know one. I guess my ideal match would be about my age, short like me and, and, and Goomba-shaped, also like me. Yeah, I, I guess I'm just describing a Goomba gal. That would be perfect. Can you give a Goomba hand? Well, I sure can, but let's run the gambit first. Hey, how's it going? Did you happen to find a new Goomba gal for... Oh, how very, um... What's wrong with you, huh? This, this is some crusty old dude. 
Do I look like I date old bombs? This is all wrong. Remember what I told you? Introduce me to a nice Goomba gal. Now come on, I'm dying over here. You're hardly my type either, you young scallywag. <laughs> oh, all right. Uh, you know what? Actually, let's do it this order, I find. Hey, how's it going? Did you happen to find a... Hmm? Whoa, hey, you're about my size, just like I asked, but you're a Yoshi. This is not what I asked for. Remember what I told you? Also, he's like, at best, a couple days old, so that's probably not great. Introduce me to a nice Goomba gal. Hey, take a long walk off a short pier, you bozo. Who'd date you anyway? <laughs> oh, this is fun. This is fun. Next up. That is one attractive shell. But that kind of makes you uh, a Koopa of some kind. I mean, you're a step up from sea turtles, but no. Remember what I told you? A nice Goomba gal. Wow. I am not feeling attractive right now. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Koops. <laughs> Legitimately, I, I am sorry about that. All right. How about Flurry? She's not Goomba-shaped. You know, I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting some parts of this right, though. Whoa! Now, that is a very glamorous gal, indeed. But you're kind of floaty, and I'm groundbound for life. And you're not even a Goomba. This is all wrong. All right, all right. Oh, haughtiest of all laughs. You had best get your eyes checked, young man. I am a prize. Ha! Nice! Rock on, Flurry! Girl knows her worth. You love to see it. All right, now, if you turn down Vivian, do you have any idea how much of the internet is going to roast you alive? This gal is popular. I'm just saying. Oh, you sure seem nice, but, um, that whole goth shadow thing is a bit... Creepy. There, I said it. You're too goth for me, and you're not even a Goomba! <sighs> what, because she's purple that makes her goth? Come on! You're not really doing much to impress me either, bud. <laughs> alright, alright. How about our resident flirt mouse? Hey, how's it going? Uh, we've got this. Oh, well, well, well. This is a gal, oh yes. But uh, you're some sort of rat. Close, but no Goomba! What do you have to say about that, Miss Mouse? Hmm. Let's stay out of dark alleys for a little while if I read. Oh. Oh. Oh, that's a death threat. <laughs> All right. Anyway, boy howdy. Let me tell you, let me tell you. I am legitimately sorry about this, Goombella. Hmm. That's Goom Goom, who asked for us our help, remember? Looks like he's enjoying life here on Key Hall Key, but he's a bit lonely. All right, well, here we go, I guess. Oh, yeah, wow, yow! She's cute, really cute! And that ponytail, man! Well, if absolutely nothing else, he's got good taste. Perfect, slam dunk, man, yes! Slam, slam dunk! Now watch an artist at work. I've got a foolproof opening line where I just confess, oh! Okay, come on. I've spent how many years getting better at reading awkward and uncomfortable lines in, in video games? I can handle the awkward pickup lines of a Goomba in a Mario game. This is gonna suck. Uh, hey, baby Goom, do you believe in love at first sight, Angel? Because, you know, I do, and... What are you trying to say? Just spit it out. Oh, boy. Oh, God, I love you. <laughs> yep! He just straight up said that. This is awkward. Oh, I've, like, loved you since before either of us were born. Please go out with me. Here. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> this is awkward. Sorry. Uh, I'm already going out with Mario here. Bad luck, pal. Really? <laughs> what? You have a boyfriend? Man, I've had enough of this. Peace! Sorry to put you on the spot, Mario. But that's the fastest way to get rid of a guy like that. Oh, God. How often has this happened to you, Goombella? I am sorry. Uh, anyway, here. We still technically helped that guy with his trouble, so let's take this as a reward. Uh, sure. I, uh, I, I don't mind playing that role again if you ever need it. The couple's cake. Food that slowly refills HP. You can't eat it yourself, but you can share it. I see. Now let's get moving. All right, all right. 
That was delightfully humorous and salaciously awkward as all get out. Hmm. All right, so I'm going to head out to Hooktail Castle again, and uh, we're going to go get the little doodad that's waiting for us over there. It's going to be a bit of a walk. If you were particularly keen-eyed, you probably saw the crack in the wall in this room the first time we were here. Hello! And it's finally come back around. Only gone, gone and done took long enough, I swear. Goombella, what say thee to this secret room deep within? This is a hidden room in Hooktail Castle. Who knew there was a room in here? Well, I guess secret rooms are supposed to be secret. I suppose so. What is the point of the switch? Just have the treasure chest in here. That's weird. And we've got ourselves an up arrow. And now we have to go and talk to a wizard about it. Oh, boy. <laughs> Admittedly, the exact logistics of how exactly any of this works is a bit beyond me. There was, like, a piece of paper that was an up arrow hidden inside Hooktail's castle? Why? And why would it be relevant to him specific? I don't really get it. Anyway, what's that in your hands? It's an arrow, apparently. What's this? An up arrow? Yeah, apparently. Whoa, I didn't know Mario was laminated. Fancy. An up arrow? Up? Of course! Huh. I didn't know that guy could fly. Also, he may have broken his roof. Hmm. This is the Ultra Stone! So that is what the star sign meant! I picked this up at a flea market years ago and forgot it was in the attic! With this, I can power up your partners even more! Nice. There we go. Just stash that one away. There you go. Woo! So shiny. So shiny. We are cooking now. Care to power up a partner right this minute? Well, I've got the shine sprites for it. So, yeah. I mean, look. Look. You all know. You already know. Goombella, you're the first one to become super strong. Shazibi! And by the power of this fancy redstone Shizube! Instill her with all matter of arcade powers! Yay! Happy dance! Adorable. Alright, and uh, she's honestly probably been given like the greatest move. It's uh it's called it's called Rally Wink? I believe. I can explain a little bit more about a, a little fun fact about it later. All you need to know about it now is that, dang, for 4 FP, Mario gets an extra turn. That's pretty fantastic. She basically just gives him her turn, which, uh, considering how powerful Mario is, lucrative indeed. So, yeah, I dare say we've got all our loose ends tied up. Let's go to the mob. 